Ikra, read. So began the revelation that initiated a lifetime of learning and legacy for Muslims all around the world. Over 1400 years later, young American Muslims at the Ikra Center of Indiana gathered to learn about the beautiful tie that their faith and their nation share. We present to you Islam in America, Ikra Kids Edition. We'll start from the beginning of our vast but limited knowledge of the origins of Islam in America. Good old Abraham Lincoln. Uh, Abraham Lincoln, did you know you can be related to Muslims through your Native American ancestors? Wait a minute. Wait one minute. Native Americans weren't Muslim, were they? There were a few old world explorers who learned from Native American trading partners that there was a village in, in the Tennessee area with bearded men that were smelting silver and dropping to their knees multiple times a day to pray. I saw some people praying on their knees. Wow, that's odd. We should really check it out. In fact, long before Abraham Lincoln's time, Muslims have existed in America. Some were immigrants who arrived during the colonialism era. Many came to the land of the free as slaves. Others simply influenced Western philosophers without ever stepping foot in the United States. Now back to Abraham Lincoln. Uh, Abraham Lincoln, did you know you can be related to Muslims through your Native American ancestors? No, but I did know. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this nation liberty and proposition that our men are created equal. Cool. Yeah, whatever. But the Native Americans that you may relate it to are called the Melungeons. They were dark-skinned natives of the Appal um, Appalachians. They integrated Turks after the Spanish acquisition. This discovery came from a DNA test from a historian. In 1527, Unz Mori, a Moroccan Berber, was the first non-American to travel across America and enter a Pueblo village. He traveled from Florida to the West Coast. Years later, in 1586, Sir Francis Drake attacked the enemies of Spain and Portugal, releasing 300 Muslim prisoners and then took them to the colony of Roanoke. Did you hear about John Knox's essay? Yeah, did you like hear about Thomas Jefferson's Declaration of Independence? During the early parts of colonialism, there was an era called the Enlightenment, based on the intellect that all men are free and equal. But some philosophers were inspired by other men, Muslim philosophers. John Locke wrote the essay, an essay concerning human understanding. In this essay, he stated that all men are born with a clean slate and are changed and are changed by government and society. The inspiration for this came from Ibn Tufail in the 1100s. John Locke's most famous saying, men are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. This idea is older than John Locke and Thomas Jefferson. This also came from their Muslim philosopher, Ibn Khaldun. Without these ideas, the Americans would have not gone in, in the Revolutionary War without that kind of intellect. Although the Muslims are not the only reason for the revolt, their input should not be overlooked. This is Anthony and Abraham Von Sully, the first recorded Muslims to live in New York. Later on in his life, Anthony was run out of town due to his religion. He settled in present-day Brooklyn, which was called Turk Island back then. This is present-day Senegal, but in the 1600s, it was a thriving Muslim empire with scholars such as Umar ibn Sayyid. Speaking of Umar ibn Sayyid, he had an interesting story. Umar ibn Sayyid was taken as a slave to work on cotton plantations in America, but he was the first recorded slave to be allowed to keep his religion. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Qulhu ahad. Allah Samad, Lam Yalid Walam Yulid Walam Yakullahu Kufwan Ahad. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Alam Tarake Fafala Rabuka Bia Sabri. In the era of the slave trade, ten percent of all slaves from Africa were Muslim. However, if you tried to practice your religion, you would be beaten. You shouldn't be praying so loud. If they find out that you're practicing Islam in your religion and not Christianity, you'll be beaten. 
Not a thousand lashes will change who I am. 97! 1998! 1,000! During a fire at the University of Alabama, a teacher was only able to save one book from the library, which happened to be a Quran dating to 1853. Good morning, class. So today I'm going to be talking to you about our religion. We are part of the Nation of Islam. So Islam the Nation of Islam is a brotherhood in America that presented teachings that did not align with Islam. But you may know one of its past prominent members, Malcolm X. Muslims go at, on Hajj. What we cannot do, though, is we cannot steal, we cannot lie, we cannot cheat, and we cannot drink alcohol. All of these rules were made by our God, Allah. Can anybody tell me who it was? Malcolm? Wallace D. Firth. Excellent. Allah came down to us as Wallace D. Firth, who founded the Nation of Islam in 1930. Yes, Malcolm? Actually, I learned that as Muslims, we do not believe that Allah takes the form of any human being. During the civil rights movement, there was a group of people, including Muslims, who came from Northern America to help with the protests in Southern America. They were called Dream Defenders. Because of the civil rights movement and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s and Malcolm X's efforts, our ancestors were able to move to a more inclusive America. Since the 1960s, the number of Muslim millionaires in America has increased to be in the thousands. However, there are still some struggles that American Muslims face. 53% of Americans are opposed to an Islamic center being built near Ground Zero. However, Islamic centers throughout the country are thriving. There are over 300 mosques and Islamic centers affiliated with the Islamic Society of North America, headquartered right here in Plainfield, Indiana. As the future of Islam in America, we encourage all Muslim youth to take part in making this our home by making positive contributions to society and taking a stand against racism, inequality, and injustice. The future of Islam in America is bright, and by investing in us, you are investing in that future.